people was that perhaps uh, as we look to the future, um, since the IGF per se can't do these things, and it's really up to stakeholders to take this role, we should try to figure out a way to create a facilitative environment in which the stakeholders could try to take on some of these functions more effectively, but also bring the results of their activities, of their efforts, to the wider community for discussion. One option for doing that might be to reconsider the main sessions. Um, after two years of the configuration of openness, access, security, diversity, uh, one could argue that doing the same thing again the next year might be uh, of relatively limited value, whereas an option that some people thought was interesting was what we could do is try to have essentially the dynamic coalitions and the workshops and so on um, able to percolate up from the bottom, from the edges of the network, as the chairman said, the, some of the, the ideas, some of the key points that have come out of their work, bring that to the larger community for discussion in a plenary setting. Um, one can imagine ways in which that would be complicated, obviously, and it would take some tweaking to define the precise mechanisms and modalities. But nevertheless, if we were to do something like that, uh, one could argue that at least then we're capturing the value that's embedded in the structure because really at the end of the day the IGF as it is now the real value is the bottom-up energy that you're getting from all these different communities in generating new ideas and having very vibrant discussions and if we could ha find a way to leverage what they have generated and bring it into a wider uh, uh, debate that would be helpful. That doesn't necessarily mean adopting recommendations. It means simply addressing the issues on a broader basis, giving more people a chance to respond to the ideas and so on. In this manner, also those ideas might feed back then into other institutions and back to the national level. So that was sort of the thrust of one of the principal ideas that came out of the workshop. There were many others, uh, but it was a very interesting conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Drake, for your report. I'd like now to open the floor for specific comments. I'd like to invite Professor Pedro Veiga, uh, representative of the Portuguese government on behalf of the European Union. Mr. Ve Professor Veiga, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, dear host country, dear IGF secretariat, dear participants, uh, I am speaking on behalf of the Portuguese Presidency of the European Union. Uh, the IGF meeting in Rio has been a very successful event. Uh, the European Union is particularly grateful to Brazil for having hosted the forum and to the IGF Advisory Group and Secretariat for having ensured a good framework for dialogue and exchange. Both the number and diversity of the participants and the impressive amount of workshops, best practice forums, and dynamic coalitions have proven that Athens was crucial for the start of the successful process, and Rio managed to bring an Athens plus. The internet is a platform of global value that should develop in the spirit of its pioneering times, offering ample opportunities for creativity and innovation to all users. It should remain open people-centered and multilingual, flexible to foster new technologies and users, preserve neutrality, inclusive and supportive of global, social, cultural, and economic interaction and development, but at the same time meet the new challenges of today and tomorrow. Improving access to the internet is a goal for us all, and freedom of expression and access to knowledge through the internet stand as important democratic values to be preserved. The current arrangements for internet governance have worked effectively to make the internet the highly robust, dynamic and geographically diverse medium that it is today. The European Union remains fully committed to the IGF. We have shown this commitment by active engagement in the process, by hosting the first IGF and by the financial contributions to the Secretariat. This forum is an important tool for the implementation of the Geneva Plan, uh, uh, plan of Action and, to the Tunis, and of the Tunis Agenda for the Information Society. It was successfully established 
a wide platform for stakeholders to contribute based on their specific expertise, knowledge, and interests. The multi-stakeholder approach of the IGF, allowing for sharing points of view and best practice among uh, very diverse groups, stands as the core of its success. The European Union and its 27 uh, member states have shown in concrete projects a strong commitment to the development of the information society in all regions in the world. More specifically, of the various regions, for example, the implementation was done through specific programs such ELIS in the Latin, Latin America, EUMEDIS with Mediterranean non-EU countries, or Asia ITC in the Asian region. An important chapter of this cooperation is dedicated to the interconnection of the regional research and education networks with the eu GN network, currently achieved through projects like Red Clare in Latin America, EUMED Connect in the Mediterranean region, TAIN2 in the, in the Asia-Pacific region, and may I, may I request, in China. May I, may I request you to complete, because this is, this is not really germane I, to I this. Will, if I, you could I'm just about complete, to finish, please. Chairman. Uh, a similar cooperation scheme with sub-Saharan countries is being prepared and is planned to be adopted at the EU Africa Summit to be held in Lisbon in, on the 8th and 9th of December under the Portuguese presidency. Uh, the European uh, Union current initiative for the Information Society, I-2010, can be a source of inspiration for the World Summit follow-up. Uh, uh, the working methods of the IGF also allows us to explore further improvements of its function and the contributions should be implemented of the World Summit uh, Information Society, Society goals. The European Union and its member states Thank you, have Professor been Vega. actively... Sorry for uh, interrupting you, but we really need to pass the floor to other, in, uh, other speakers. Uh, thank you very much. You can make your speech available uh, much, in printing form. Thank you. Uh, I'd like now to invite Mr. Vince Cerf from Google. Please, Mr. Cerf, you have the floor. I don't need the headset. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I have just a few brief observations I'd like to make about the IGF. Uh, it is a strikingly useful mechanism, and I want to underscore its value so far. I've been to the Athens one and this one as well. From the ICANN point of view, as I see it as the former chairman, uh, the IGF framework has helped a great deal. In the ICANN world, we have to make decisions. We have to come to conclusions about policy. That's sometimes very difficult. In the IGF world, it's a very open forum. The attendees are very diverse. There are a wide-ranging number of topics that are offered. It's a non-negotiating climate. I can't emphasize how valuable that is. Many different points of view are uh, offered. Sometimes people don't agree, and it's OK. It's, in fact, important to see the diversity and range of opinions and views about issues they help inform other processes in other organizations, including ICANN, that do have to reach specific conclusions. The thing that I like the most about the IGF so far is that there is a huge opportunity for dialogue and for follow-up. I am leaving IGF with at least a dozen possible actions to take that I hope will contribute to the continued growth and utility of the Internet. So I simply uh, want to congratulate the organizers, both of Rio and the previous Athens, and encourage you to continue this process more or less along the lines that you've structured it, because it is strikingly valuable. So I thank you all for that. Thank you very much. I'd like now to give the floor to Mr. Alan Michael, representative of the Parliament of the United Kingdom. Thank you. 
Thank you very much indeed. Can I congratulate you on the success of the uh, event this year? Uh, it's been very successful indeed, but it's vital that the IGF process is actually seen to make a difference. So, two questions. Firstly, because we need to see what the IGF process is achieving, will the Secretariat make a space available on the IGF website for commitments? We're not suggesting a traditional text. We're suggesting voluntary individual organizations or group or countries saying, we're going to do X as a result of Rio, or we're going to do Y with others. From the UK, we're making a commitment to establish a UK IGF to involve industry, civil society, and parliamentarians as well as government. And we're making a commitment within that to create a partnership to cut crime and nuisance online. And we aim to report substantial progress to the IGF next year. The second, in preparing for Rio, we've changed our approach in the UK. Government and nominate have engaged industry and parliamentarians in the process. But it's clear that here in Rio, we're not yet living up to the multi-stakeholder ambition. So for next year, can we all aim to increase the engagement of mainstream industry, of NGOs, and parliamentarians at the next IGF? It's essential to see that mainstream industry engagement. The engagement of the child protection NGOs has shown what incredible value that they can bring. But to me, the biggest disappointment is that only parliamentarians from Brazil and the UK and the European Parliament and South Africa have come to Rio. How can we help you so that we do better in 2008? And if we walk the talk at a national level, isn't that the way to help to embed the IGF process and enable it to mature? Thank you very much. I invite now Councillor Everton Lucero, the Brazilian Minister of External Relations. Uh, please be brief. And uh, my next speaker is Mrs. Margaret Warren another representative of the Parliament of the United Kingdom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it is clear to us that the IGF is in the forefront of multilateralism within the United Nations system. Uh, and it may set precedents and contribute to review other instances of UN policy making. Uh, how can it do that? How can it achieve this? It, I think that it's important to bear in mind that the IGF has to live up to the expectations of the international community on global public policy making. And there are certain uh, improvements that I believe could be considered for the next session or sessions aiming at this goal. For instance, attendance at the main sessions. This is one of the main sessions with uh, great attendance, but others weren't that successful. Uh, perhaps because there were too many events in parallel and uh, lot, lots of people wanted to be at the same time in workshops which were considering more in-depth issues that later on would be brought to the attention of the main session. So perhaps one good improvement would be to have main sessions as single events or at least with a uh, few parallel sessions, so that they will not be competing with workshops. I mean, sessions could be held, for instance, uh, each morning or half morning, and uh, uh, the reporting back sessions, on the other hand, were even lower in attendance. Uh, I think that they could be incorporated into the main sessions to, to make them more useful. And uh, as I said, substantive and in-depth debate could be left to the workshops and dynamic coalition meetings. Main sessions would therefore receive reports and focus on discussing suggested actions, possible way forward. Let's see that the main question of uh, the main question to be posed to each main session would be where and how this particular issue should be addressed. So there's no need to reproduce at main sessions the same workshop format of panelists and discussants that we already have at the workshops. We could also think of a possible uh, rotational basis for chairing each of the main sessions among the different regions. Of course, the host country would continue chairing 
the opening, the closing, perhaps the emerging issues or one of these particular sessions, including taking stock. But it would be good, perhaps, to have a more diverse uh, participation and uh, geographically balanced. I think it's also extremely important to keep what we achieved here that the Secretariat continues to prepare the summary records at each session, and the Chairman should also continue to present his or her conclusions. Uh, that is, it ha is related to compile the proceedings, which is also in the mandate of the IGF. Just a final remark, Mr. Chairman. I uh, would like to uh, use this opportunity to also, also to uh, suggest that procedures for preparing the IGF should also be improved. The present advisory group has no rules of procedure, and the absence of rules is not necessarily beneficial to the, pro to the process. There are no clear rules of participants, and no, not absolute transparency in its proceedings. So, and we should also think of uh, the seriously considered issue of financing. I believe that the United Nations Secretariat needs to have a budget that is free from the constraints of donors' priorities. Thank to you, avoid the dominance of some stakeholders. Lucero, thank over you for the your others. contribution. Thank I'd you, like Mr. to move on, uh, asking Madam Margaret Moran to take the floor. And I would like to inform that we are going to draw a line now um, and invite the other uh, remaining uh, speakers. We have six of them uh, to take the floor in the afternoon. We still need to take these 10 minutes that we have left to take some decisions, I mean, address issues that are important during uh, this session in the morning. Madam, you have the floor, please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I want to congratulate the IGF, in particular on the uh, way in which the issue of online child protection has been a major focus of this conference. It has, I think, be, had the uh, ability to unite us across different sectors, whether we be industry, NGOs, uh, parliamentarians, and across countries, because it is a, a serious issue that can only be addressed by international cooperation. And that, that part of the IGF, I think, has been very uh, important, and there will be some very important outcomes going forward. Most particularly, it is of real significance to users, and that is my question. How can we ensure that we have a greater voice for users within this process as part of a uh, gathering of stakeholders. I think that we have to uh, ensure that the voice of the user is really heard so that they can be part of determining the outcomes from technological innovation going forward. And uh, by that I do not mean uh, stakeholder, existing stakeholders having new um, out, uh, new mechanisms, online mechanisms, for example, to have their voice heard over again. I do mean users that are usually not heard in forums like this. And I believe that we should be looking for uh, mechanisms and a commitment to the IGF at various levels to uh, establish mechanisms for public participation in the kinds of debates that affect us. That way, I think affect all of us. That way I think there will be greater transparency, greater accountability and real outcomes from the IGF in the future. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to inform that in the afternoon we'll be inviting um, Mr. Chisukasa Makino, Frederick Rio, Nick Dieden, Raul Echeverria, Karen Banks and Karen Banks. I would like now to invite my co-chair, Mr. Desai, to say a few words on the uh, following up of, our, of this session here. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think we are short of time. I'm not going to try and do my usual, which is to try and draw things together. I'll probably have to leave it for the closing remarks. Uh, just a f two or three points which struck me listening to uh, people. Uh, one, uh, what struck me was the very real fact that in some ways what we have in the IGF is a representation of the supplier dimension, uh, of in the suppliers of internet services, whether it's the internet community, whether it is the NGOs, whether it is the industry, or for that matter whether it is the government departments. It's essentially the people who are involved in supplying internet services. We have not yet fully captured 
the interest of the users, of the presence of the users. One area where this did happen was on the child protection area, and we saw how fruitful that was in bringing, uh, so I think we'll have to work a little harder in trying to see how the user interest, and that's a lesson. The second lesson that I draw listening to people from uh, here is that we do need to think through a little bit more the connection between the main sessions and the workshops, dynamic coalitions, best practice uh, workshops. And uh, certainly this is something which we will have to address, the better structuring of the whole uh, uh, exercise. The third thing which struck me is that, uh, yes, even though everybody accepts that this is not a forum for negotiation or concrete, in immediate concrete actions, people do expect to see where has it made a difference in terms of uh, the way this, uh, it operates. And one idea that was put forward was the idea of commitments. Not commitments by the IGF, but commitments by groups. Uh, which is, in, it's, we call it the pledge and review system in, uh, in, in international relations sometimes. Let's think about all of these things. Uh, I'm also very happy that most people have been uh, welcomed, have generally welcomed the way the IGF has been conducted and run. And I, of course, join everybody in congratulating and thanking the government and people of Brazil for the phenomenal effort they have put in into this uh, exercise. I really just want to conclude with my usual marriage analogy. The uh, I, I described Athens as the place where the boy and the girl were meeting for the first time and were scoping each other out. So somebody asked me, how do I describe this session? I said, this is the session where you met the in-laws and it appears that you passed the test. So maybe when we get to Delhi, you will actually start holding hands with each other, you see, and we'll get somewhere. So on that happy, on that, on that happy note of the prospect of holding hands in Delhi, I have just two quick things to do. One, I want to invite the uh, head of the Indian delegation, Mr. Jender Singh, who wants to invite you to Delhi. And then after that, I want to give a brief word to Nick Gowing, who wants to tell us a bit about the afternoon session. Uh, Mr. Jen, if you could be very quick on this. Respected co-chairman, distinguished participants, at the outside, I would like to thank the Secretary General of the United Nations for convening this IGF. Brazil de deserves all accolades for successfully hosting and organizing this IGF. These four days have witnessed fruitful discussions on a very broad range of issues across the five themes. We must also thank Brazil for the gracious hospitality accorded to, uh, accorded to us. As you are all aware, technology has been and will continue to grow apace. It is important that policy issues are adequately addressed along with advances in technology. The multi-stakeholder model has been emphasized throughout the discussions in Rio de Janeiro. The next IGF is scheduled to be held in New Delhi from 8th December to 11th December 2008. On behalf of the host country, it is my pleasant duty to invite all of you to India for the third IGF. We believe that the meeting in New Delhi would carry forward the comprehensive discussions that have place, taken place in Rio de Janeiro. The third IGF would build on the achievements at Greece and Brazil. The participants have is emphasized that the IGF meetings should consider what can be done to extend the reach of the internet to the five billion people who have yet no access. Mm -hmm. Keeping in view the spirit of the Tunis agenda for information society, we look forward to an inclusive and development oriented dialogue at New Delhi. We extend an invitation to all those present here that is representative of governments, of civil society, of the private sector and the te technical committee to come and participate in the New Delhi IGF to be held under the AGS of the, Uni of the United Nations. India is an ancient civilization and now is a modern society. With its multicultural characteristics, it is rich in diversity. India invites you with its traditional hospitality. Uh, India welcomes you again to the third IGF at New Delhi. Thank you. Newton, thank you very much indeed. Um, I just want to underline to you that I'm here to make sure that the last two hours build on that overwhelming momentum that's been, we've heard in the last hour and a half 
to, is, to, to hear about emerging issues, not the processes, but the issues which haven't been discussed in the overwhelming number of workshops. But can I ask you, please try and get back here by 2 o'clock. That means 10 to 2 plus 10 minutes. And although Bertrand said he wants much more informal relationship, you can't all have lunch with him today. <laughs> so please come back in 50 minutes and let's keep the momentum going. Thank you very Thank you. Thank you very much. We reassemble at 2 o'clock, not 4 o'clock, at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock sharp, we reassemble here. Uh, uh, apologies from us, the two co-chairs, for not being able to accommodate all the speakers, but I hope that it will be possible for the afternoon session to accommodate their concerns. Thank you.